Welcome to Withington Stadium. It's the opening night of the high school football playoffs. Unbeaten Jackson High, six and three Okemos in this pre-district tilt from Withington Stadium. GLC Tom Ranchford, Josh Ankrell, and Tony Mack is back this week. And our presenting sponsor tonight, Trips Auto Shop and Collision Center. The right repair is no accident with Trips. What a year for Jay High, Tom. Thought we'd never see it, Greg, and it's uh, something that we do need to embrace and enjoy uh, as the playoffs begin tonight in the pre-district game against an old foe in the Chieftains of Okemos. Tonight's the 16th time Jackson High has played Okemos. Last year's game was won on the last play of the game by uh, Jackson High, 25-24. to 24. Uh, Jackson's season kind of ended in disappointment with a 5-4 and four record. They didn't qualify as an additional qualifier. And, um, you know, over the 15 previous games, uh, Okemos does have an 8-7 to seven advantage over Jackson. Of course, uh, in the CAAC, uh, where they played most of the games against Okemos over the years. And remember, back when Okemos was a big fish in a small pond when they were in the Capitol Circuit, they actually were in the state finals a couple of times. Back in 1976, in the infancy of the state finals, they were in the finals that year, um, lost to East Grand Rapids in Class B, and they were also in Class B in the finals in 1980, where they lost to Muskegon Catholic, if you can believe that. Muskegon Catholic used to be Class B. But it's been a pretty uh, pretty long playoff drought for Okemos. They just have a 5-10 and 10 record, so uh, their five wins were basically in those two years that they went to the finals. They won one game in 76. Back then, there was only uh, a couple of rounds. It was the semis, then the finals. Then they won th uh, two games in the 1980 season, and they've won a couple since. Tonight is Jackson High's ninth playoff game ever, where the Vikes have a record of two and six. You remember the one win uh, in 1999 when they beat Battle Creek Central, went uh, to Brighton the following week and lost to the Bulldogs of Brighton. And then just a couple of years ago, 2015, Jackson High won that opening pre-district game here against Livonia Churchill and lost the following week against Livonia Franklin. Two dissimilar teams, uh, Okemos Tom, big offensive line, good running back in Derek Sims, and they just try to run it down your throat, essentially. And Jackson's just the opposite. Jackson can do that, but uh, they're all about speed. Yeah, I, obviously the first time we've seen Okemos this year, but as you watch them warm up, they are impressive looking physically. I uh, like to throw it around a little bit, throwing the fade into the corner. They went 6-3 and three on the season. They lost a couple of games. I, I still don't know how they lost that second game. They got beat by Ann Arbor Skyline in week two. Skyline has a record. Uh, they ended the season at 4-5, and five, and it's really kind of hard to believe that they could have lost to Skyline. They lost to DeWitt 30, I think it was 39 nothing. Pretty much everybody lost to DeWitt. And then they lost a real um, close game last week to league champ East Lansing. And you know, the Okemos East Lansing game, you can throw the record books out as uh, East Lansing did beat Okemos last week by the score of 20 to 17. So Okemos is pretty decent. They're six and three. They're uh, uh, a very legitimate opponent here uh, for the Vikes. Yeah, they got some big, big kids, good athletes. Let's take a three-minute break here on the pre. When we come back, we'll hear from Jackson High coach Scott Farley, and we're probably about 15 minutes away from tonight's kickoff. It's Jackson. It's Okemos on 970 WKHM 101.5 FM. Have you ever met one of the Jimmies from Jimmy's Towing and Automotive Service? You know, the men and women who never sleep when you're on the road. The Jimmies at Jimmy's Towing and Automotive Service take pride in providing you with fast, prompt, and personal service when you need them the most. Plus, the Jimmies at Jimmy's Towing and Automotive Service don't just tow wherever you need to go. They'll get your vehicle back on the road with their incredible automotive service department. Jimmy's Towing and Automotive Service. More than a towing company. 
My name is Stephanie Spolster Kristovic, and I'm the principal at Lumen Christi Catholic School. At Lumen Christi, we love our students, and so we want the very best for them, and that means we want them to be their very best. Our core values create a space for your children to be the best they can be, achieving excellence, living faith, demonstrating character, promoting teamwork, and being warm and welcoming are who we are at Lumen Christi. Come give your student a chance to change the world. Denny's Super Slam is just $5.99. I'm sure you've heard the jingle. $5.99? Are you out of your mind? Yeah, that one. It comes with eggs, hash browns, bacon, sausage, and now with your choice of buttermilk or pumpkin pancakes. Pumpkin pancakes? Are you out of your mind? Right? I thought the same thing. Although it is fall, so pumpkin pancakes don't seem that crazy. $5.99? Are you out of your mind? No, you're right. That does sound a little crazy. The $5.99 Super Slam from Denny's. Limited time only. Price and participation may vary. No substitutions. Upgrade to pumpkin pancakes for 49 cents. West End Farm to Table, formerly Barb's Country Kitchen, invites you to come sit among friends and try their at-home cooking with local farm fresh food. Their menu offers traditional breakfast and lunch items. Or for the more adventurous palate, try their daily specials. Open Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. and weekends, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Check out their menu on the West End Farm to Table Facebook page, located at 4141 West Michigan Ave. Want to join the Jackson YMCA? Now's the time. Take advantage of the joint fee special running September 4th through November 10th. All joint fees will be $10. That's a savings of up to $90. What comes with your Jackson YMCA membership? You get access to both Y locations. Free child care while you work out downtown. Free featured group exercise classes. Access to participating Ys nationwide. With a Y membership, there is no annual contract. So give the Y a try. Call 782-0537 or stop by either branch to sign up today. What makes a restaurant a gathering place for families, businesses, and friends? Well, everything you'll find at Candy's Busy Bee Cafe. Candy and her crew are the kind of people who get birthday cards for the regulars. Candy's Busy Bee Cafe is the kind of place you'll want to come back to after just one visit. Tableside service, great conversations, incredible staff, and tremendous food with breakfast served from open to close. Become a regular today at Candy's Busy Bee Cafe in downtown Jackson. On our pregame with Coach Scott Farley, and Scott, care to comment on uh, that performance last week by Micah Kretzinger? That was that was something. Well, you know, he's such a hardworking kid. You know, you he really he's the kind of guy that deserves that sort of a sort of a game. You know, and and it it finally came through for him. You know, and what gets lost in in the five touchdowns and the hundred yards rushing and a hundred yards receiving is he played safety on defense. Um, which is out of his normal position and um, had two pass breakups and played a great game back there too. So just a tremendous, tremendous game. Yeah, he's a, he's a great athlete. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about Okemos? Uh You should be pretty familiar with those guys. Well, it, yeah, you know, coming out of their league uh, a year ago. But, you know, they're big and physical. You know, they really kind of want to just pound the ball at you uh, with their offense and they're, you know, kind of a big straightforward Mm-hmm. Uh, aggressive defense as well so um you know kind of a contrast in styles to a certain extent with them being big and physical and our us being a little more speed oriented well we've had some uh, lousy weather the last couple of weeks doesn't it seem to affect your guys uh, too much and i i know it doesn't affect you you'll be in your bermudas tonight <laughs> i'll be wearing shorts yeah you know our guys have really done a good job of kind of adapting to whatever our weather situation i mean we've had super hot uh earlier in the season and we've had cold and rainy the last couple of weeks uh, um they've done a good job uh what about edwards scott uh you know we're gonna see what he can do you know he actually injured his opposite foot last week he was uh nearly 100 percent going into the lake fenton game and then injured the ankle on his other foot so um you know we'll see where he's at before the game and see what he can do well, you brought a kid in, a sophomore, Dorian Riley, and he looked like the, the second incarnation of uh, Jim Brown back there. I mean, he was fantastic for you, wasn't he? Yeah, he did a great job. He's had a fantastic season on the JV in those first eight games and came up and, and we really didn't didn't miss too much of a beat with him in there. So um, if, if Xire can't go, uh, you know, he'll get more, more playing time uh, this week. We continue to marvel at the decision-making of Noah Bush. Uh, he really runs the ship there for you. 
He really does. You know, he, he stays inside of himself. He doesn't try to do more than what he's capable of doing, and he knows he's got some good good dudes to get the ball to, and he does a really nice job of making decisions and getting that where it needs to go. Probably unsung for you guys, Scott, your offensive line. They've, they've really uh, been solid. Really are, you know, and when they, they come off the bus, they're not necessarily the most impressive-looking bunch, but they do a nice job of, of you know, our, our, uh, our offense is not really a – knock you straight back kind of a deal it's it's a lot of double teams and a lot of just kind of getting in the way and and they they've done a really nice job of that all year and your two linebackers talk about uh brady lawrence and uh gearmore baird they they have just been outstanding they really have you know they are very aggressive kids they're very coachable kids they've worked on their game all year they're good weight room guys um, and you put them on the inside with, with Micah and, and Zion Hardrick on the outside, and, and it's uh, pretty tough to run the football on us. It really hasn't been anybody that's had a whole lot of success running the ball, and, and that'll be kind of a test tonight because Oklahoma is going to want to come in and kind of pound it at us. So. Kids pretty excited, level-headed. How, how are they looking at it? You know, they're a pretty level-headed bunch, you know. I mean, they, they don't get too excited, win or lose. You know, they do their thing, and, and um, you know, I can usually tell going into the game, you know, where their heads are at. And so uh, by about 6.30, we'll know what's up. Scott, good luck tonight. All right, thank you. Have you ever met one of the Jimmies from Jimmy's Towing and Automotive Service? You know, the men and women who never sleep when you're on the road. The Jimmies at Jimmy's Towing and Automotive Service take pride in providing you with fast, prompt, and personal service when you need them the most. Plus, the Jimmies at Jimmy's Towing and Automotive Service don't just tow wherever you need to go. They'll get your vehicle back on the road with their incredible automotive service department. Jimmy's Towing and Automotive Service. More than a towing company. At Seymour Ford Lincoln, it's their honesty and the best products in the market that keep their customers coming back. Seymour Ford Lincoln features a fantastic selection of new and certified pre-owned vehicles to fit your lifestyle. Get a 2018 Ford F-150 Crew Cab, AZ Plan Lease, two thirty-seven a month for 24 months with 10,500 miles per year. With $1,000 down, plus first payment, tax, title, license, and fees. Requires RCL renewal. See dealer for details. All factory rebates to dealer. Offer expires October 31st, 2018. For full inventory, visit SeymourFord.com. Advanced Fluid Technologies, a proud member of the Jackson community and proud to be a longtime supporter of high school athletics. Advanced Fluid Technologies has the latest technology in extreme heavy-duty machining and grinding coolants designed for use on ferrous and non-ferrous applications and for stainless and exotic metals. Advanced Fluid Technologies believes in keeping manufacturing a part of Jackson. Successful manufacturing means a successful Jackson. Advanced Fluid Technologies. Hi, this is Jeff Bontrager, Superintendent of Northwest Community Schools. The Mountie Nation would like to welcome you, Jackson County, to the fall high school sports season. <laughs> Commitment, teamwork, leadership, dedication. We are Northwest Go Mounties. Looking for a new way to reward your employees? Tired of the same old company picnics? Add some adrenaline to your event and move it to the Jackson Speedway. Whether you're looking for a team-building event or an innovative, fast-paced fundraiser, the Jackson Speedway can customize an event specifically for your team. For more info, log on to jacksonspeedway.net. They'll provide everything you need from safety equipment and carts. You just need to bring your appetite for speed. Your next fundraiser, team-builder, or gather awaits at jacksonspeedway.net. Let me ask you a quick question. Have you been putting it off and by it i mean filling out that college application scholarship or financial aid form hey they can be intimidating what if i fill it out wrong how do i make sure it's not red flag well that's easy your free assistance is available thanks to the college and career access center inside the jackson crossing mall their mission is to help you get the post high school accreditation training or degree you need to be successful in life the college and career access center help for all ages Back to high school football on WKHM, Jackson's News Talk, 970 AM, 101.5 FM. Welcome back to Withington. 
We await the arrival of the uh, teams here. Winner of tonight's game will play uh, the winner of Portage, Northern Portage Central. Tom, they're playing for the second time. Yeah, and uh, I think it's five straight times now that uh, Portage Central has beaten them. They, it's just been, it, it's, uh, it's quite a streak there. They're, it's Portage Central's home game tonight. But they're playing at Portage Northern, and the, I, I'm, I've got a call into uh, casual Craig Cunningham. Craig's son plays, his his grandson and his nephew both play at Portage Central where he went to school. And uh, they're, he's at the game, and they'll be giving us updates on that throughout the night. But it's Portage Central's home game by playoff points, yet the game is being played at Portage Northern's brand-new facility. Uh, I, I can only surmise it's, they, they moved it there because of the field. Uh, I think McCamley Stadium, where Portage Central plays, has regular turf, and I and the new stadium at Portage Northern has beautiful brand new field turf. And I, that's the only reason I can imagine why that game would be at Northern. A couple add-on sponsors tonight: Penn Chiropractic Center. I think we heard from Dr. Penn earlier. Aspen one-hour heating and air conditioning, AAA of Jackson on Wisner Street, handling all of your insurance and travel needs. And uh, again, Trips Auto Shop and Collision Center, our presenting sponsor for all the playoff games here on 970, 1015, and tonight on 1019, it is Michigan Center at Grass Lake, round two of that game, and the winner likely match up Tom with Lumen next week. Yeah, we're presupposing that Lumen Christie will handle five and four Napoleon tonight. I would uh, wager on it. Um, that game will be played at Jim Crowley Memorial Field. The, the scoreboard has been erected at Lumen Christie, which has been gone since Labor Day weekend during that uh, uh, the tornado that went through. So they played the whole regular season, the rest of it, without the scoreboard and clock, and it has been installed without the video board. Just the scoreboard panel is up and ready. So that'll be in uh, play tonight for the game over at James C. Crowley Memorial Stadium. We'll have updates throughout uh, the night of that game uh, between Napoleon and Lumen Christie and the one you just mentioned between Michigan Center at Grass Lake, along with Quincy at Columbia Central in the other bracket in the other district in Division Six, And uh, along with Quincy and Columbia Central, the winner of that plays Blissfield uh, Hillsdale winner, and we're also going to check in with WCSR in Hillsdale, who will be covering the Blissfield-Hillsdale game. And WTVB, our friends from Branch County, the voice of Branch County, WTVB, will be covering the Quincy-Columbia Central game for us, so we'll make sure we have updates for that game throughout the evening. Here come the Vikings, led by Micah Kretzinger, Dakota Robertson, And let's take a two-minute break here, and we'll be back with tonight's opening kickoff as we get set for the playoffs on WKHM, WKHM.com, around the world. Have you ever met one of the Jimmies from Jimmy's Towing and Automotive Service? You know, the men and women who never sleep when you're on the road. The Jimmies at Jimmy's Towing and Automotive Service take pride in providing you with fast, prompt, and personal service when you need them the most. Plus, the Jimmies at Jimmy's Towing and Automotive Service don't just tow wherever you need to go. They'll get your vehicle back on the road with their incredible automotive service department. Jimmy's Towing and Automotive Service. More than a towing company. Aspen One Hour Heating and Air Conditioning is a proud supporter of local high school sports in the Jackson area. I would like to wish the Jackson High Vikings the best of luck as they continue on their historic run against Okemos in the first round of the playoffs tonight. With winter just around the corner, remember to have your home heating system inspected by the professionals at Aspen One Hour Heating and Air Conditioning or upgrade your system to a new Amana high-efficiency furnace. Visit AspenHeating.com to schedule your appointment today and remember, they're always on time or you don't pay a dime. Go Vikings! 
Every day is a great day to be a Viking. Believe the hype. Hello, this is Jeff Beal, superintendent for Jackson Public Schools, and I have never been more excited to begin a school year. Construction is beginning around the district with new and expanded programming from caring young fives through innovative early college options. Jackson Public Schools is committed to the success of your student. We are building a safer, stronger 21st century district. Join the excitement and enroll today. Jackson Public Schools, where community comes together. West End Farm to Table, formerly Barb's Country Kitchen, invites you to come sit among friends and try their at-home cooking with local farm fresh food. Their menu offers traditional breakfast and lunch items. Or for the more adventurous palate, try their daily specials. Open Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. and weekends, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Check out their menu on the West End Farm to Table Facebook page, located at 4141 West Michigan Ave. To GOC and Tom Ratchford High School Football on WKHM Jackson's News Talk 970 AM 101.5 FM. Welcome back to Withington. We're just in time to catch Joel Shaner and the Jackson Marching Vikings and tonight's national anthem. Set to go here from the stadium. Jackson won the toss, coin toss, but deferred. So Okemos will get the football first here tonight. No rain yet. We're doing our no rain dance here at the stadium. Pretty yeah. good night, Tom, uh, week 10. Yeah, it's, it's a very nice night. And the last couple of, uh, we did Jackson High in their week eight game. Um, the homecoming game with Pinckney, and it was a drizzly cold night. And the same thing last week at Lake Fenton. They won both of those uh, high scoring uh, by Jackson Battles. And uh, it's just so nice to have a dry evening. That rain is to our south. It's essentially on the border right now, uh, moving up on the Ohio. Uh, Michigan border, Ohio, Indiana, Michigan border. And we're hoping that the rain at least uh, stays out of here so that we can get this thing. Uh, at least into the second half. Pre-game brought to you by Jimmy's Towing and Automotive Service, more than just a towing company. They'll get you on the road again, and when you're on the road, they never sleep at Jimmy's. So we get set for the opening kickoff. Bikes like to onside it. They do. The ball is loose, and they couldn't grab it before it trickled out of bounds. Pretty good kick there. But it well, that's one thing Jackson does on their special teams. They uh, that's almost a great weapon for them because they, they, when they kicked off last week, they stole that right away from Lake Fenton, and uh, this time, however, the ball took a just a, that extra high hop, and they were unable to field it. 
Officials are talking now. There's only five officials instead of seven as we've had all season in the SEC White. Uh, there's only five throughout the first three rounds, dist pre-district, district, and regional. We won't see seven officials again until the state semis and the state finals. Quentin Smith on the kick. Here comes Okamas. Pro set. Runner right up the middle and huge running room. And they just drag tacklers all the way down to the Jackson 43, and that's very close to a first down. Well, you were talking about that as we were watching them warm up, how enormous this offensive line is for um, for Okamas, and they just bulldozed Jackson's line and moved them right back and got a gain of nine on the very first running play. Quarterback is Mason Kesmerick, a senior. Big, tall, lanky kid, and their big running back is Derek Sims. And Sims has it, and he's dragged down, did not get the first down. That was second in a yard, and he might have lost a foot or so. They tried to go off tackle to their right, so on Jackson's left, I think that's Zion Hardrick over there is the outside linebacker on that side. Whoever it was, it's on the far side of the field. Very difficult to read the Jackson's uh, orange and black numbers on that gray uniform. But uh, nice play was made. Sets up third down and one. Third and short. And they just bucket right up the middle. And not much there, but they got a first down. Got about three yeah, pretty, down to the 41. Pretty good hit again. I want to say Guillermo Baird and probably Brady Lawrence made the tackle. Kegel Johnson was credited with it along with uh, with Baird. Bikes on defense, Kretzinger, Lawrence, Baird, Hardrick are the linebackers. They make a lot of the plays. Because Merrick pitches this time. They turn the corner easily and get down to the 35 yard line. Good quick uh, pitch play. And right around the corner, not much contain out there and a pickup of a solid uh, seven yards on first down yeah, for so, Okamas. So far, Okamas is doing a pretty good job getting off the ball and getting engaged with the Jackson High defensive front, uh, the, the front five. They split two wide outs here, far side of the field, run a little trap play. Got a couple yards, bring up a third and about two. Yeah, a little counter, a little crisscross in the backfield. I didn't see if they pulled up front, but uh, Jackson did a good job on that. Sets up a third down and about two yards. And this is uh, exactly what's in Okemos's playbook. They just really try to run it down your throat. Handed off here, easy first down. Well, not easy, but they got to the 30, and that'll be enough. They needed a yard and a half. They got two and a half, and they have a first down just inside the Jackson 30-yard line. We'll call it the 29. Opening drive of the game, and Okemos has ground out a couple first downs, and after the short, uh, Jackson attempted onside kick. Okamas a short field, and they're already at the Jackson 29-yard line. On first down, Sims in motion. Fullback Burrows up the middle. Good gain on first down again. He's got six yards down to the 23-yard line. That was a buck trap as uh, they ran a little crisscross in the backfield, handed off to the second man, and that uh, guard... 55, Michael Smith, actually 55 is Sean Crowley, pulled inside, and he ran behind that very nicely, and a very good gain again on first down, sets up second and four. So their first down plays, they've gotten nice yardage. That opens up the playbook, turn the corner, 2015, all the way down near the 10-yard line. That was Derek Sims there. Star running back to the 11. 
And it's first and 10, Oakham is knocking on the door here early. Well, and that little misdirection in the backfield either had Jackson uh, biting on the fake or their fast flow isn't uh, quite up to par, but I any way you cut it, Oakham is marching right down the field on the Vikes. On first down, Kazmarek out of the gun this time. Second back, tries to turn the corner, beat a tackle, and got it down inside the five yard line. Boy, Jackson had a shot at him right at the line of scrimmage and a good cut. They'll mark it uh, just inside the five. They can get a first down at the one. So these first down running plays, very successful for the Chiefs. They're mopping them up. It reminds me, Greg, of about the middle of the season when we were here against Ypsilanti Lincoln on that first drive by Lincoln, and they drove right down the field. Second down, just inside the five. Kazmarek, man in motion. Buck up the middle, some running room. And they are close to a first down at the one yard line. Look like Sims again. And they spot it right at the one. Zion Hardrick, Hegel Johnson on the tackle for Jackson High, but Olkimus now on third down is on the doorstep. Third down and a foot for a first down and about four feet for a touchdown. They go full house in the backfield. And that should be a touchdown, it is. Touchdown Chiefs right up the middle. And they ran rough shot over the Jackson High defense on this first series. And the Vikes will have to buckle up the old chin straps on defense. That's an enormous offensive line that Okamas rolls out there, Tom. And they were impressive. Yeah, they got off the ball real well, and they have a nice package of running plays. And you think about it, they didn't even come anywhere near throwing the ball, and they drove right down the field against Jackson. Short field because of the onside kick. They had it at midfield. But nonetheless, uh, they mopped up the Vikings here. Extra point kick is up and good. 7 nothing Okemos. 6.58 to go in the first quarter. Jackson has not touched the ball. They will when we come back. In 30 seconds on WKHM, WKHM.com. Downtown Jackson is looking good. Come down and see the redesigned streets, improved walkability, redesigned parks, and buildings filled with shops, food, and nightlife. If you haven't been downtown lately, come on down. Hungry? They've got you covered with dining options to suit everyone. There's always something going on. So come down and see all the progress being made in downtown Jackson. This message brought to you by American Title Company of Jackson. Back to GOC and Tom Ratchford High School Football on WKHM. Jackson's News Talk 970 AM 101.5 FM. For our trips, Auto Shop and Collision Center. Jackson behind the eight ball early here tonight. Very impressive opening drive for Okemos. And they're up 7-0. See if we can figure out who their kicker is. Their numbers are. Yeah, it's a, it's John Magaldi, the uh, senior kicker, number 12, same kid that kicked the PAT. And he punches one, and that'll go out of bounds. And that'll get Jackson the ball at the 35-yard line. A pretty good field position for the Vikings. Tom out of town. The out-of-town scores on WKHM are brought to you by AAA of Jackson on Wisner Street, handling all your insurance and travel needs. Lumen Christie with an early 6-0 uh, lead against Napoleon. Uh, 8.34 to go in the first quarter, and uh, Nick Thomas had a nice run. So the Titans lead 6-0. They did miss their PAT. Over at Columbia Central, Garrig Elliott had a 55-yard punt return for a score. So with about five minutes to go, it was actually at nine minutes and 50 seconds uh, on the fourth play of the game, Columbia took a 7-0 lead against Quincy. Here's Bush on the handoff, secondary 40-45, 48-yard line on the first play. And 
And a first down for the Vikings. Not sure who ran that. But they got 13. Here's Bush on a late pitch. And clobbered in the backfield. I dare say Kretzinger hasn't been hit that hard all season. Olkamas came to play tonight. He lost two yards back to the almost the 45, well, 46 yard line. Loss of two, second and 12. Edwards, who's been nicked up the last two weeks, is the starting tailback. And Noah Bush hands to Edwards. Not much there. He got the two yards back. It's going to bring up a third and ten. And Okamas looks pretty stout here so far in between the tackles. They've got some big kids. Yeah, that's what's impressive about him is this is... Um, this is a very big physical football team. Oh, third down and 11 for the Vikes. Up front, Richard, Simonetti, Fairchild, Holman, Molitor. Noah Bush out of the gun, drops back, looks and throws. That's caught. 40-35 first down. Mickey O'Dowd first down on the slant. Perfect pass by Noah Bush. Yeah, the far receiver to the wide side of the field ran off the coverage. And uh, how many times have we seen Mickey O'Dowd get into that slot right there? Caught the ball right at the hash mark. Beautifully thrown ball by Noah Bush. Got Jackson a first down across the 35, down to the Chieftain's 34-yard line. Edwards, the lone running back on first down from the Okemos 34. Bush out of the gun. Got trips to the right. And they run an option short side. Edwards could not break that tackle. That's a great play out on the corner by Okamas. The um, could go down, missed a block out there, and his man well, came up, really made a nice play. Well, you leave, you leave a man unblocked, and you're going to option off him, and you want that kid to run at either the quarterback or the... Uh, running back Edwards and then Bush has to read that so something was misread it wasn't properly uh, executed by Jackson tip your cap to Alchemist who's doing a very good job offensively and defensively so far tonight second down and nine from the Alchemist 33 the Chiefs leave seven nothing you're on WKHM look like Alchemist jumped no several, flag looked like they jumped several times and they give it to Edwards Sticks his nose to about the 30. That's all. Bring up a third and six. Edwards coming out. Let's see. Does not have got a little. There's just a little hitch in his giddy up well, there. Well, he had one leg. Well, he had one foot hurt for the past few weeks, and then he hurt the other one Friday night. Looks like the sophomore Riley back there. Run an option to Riley, and he's driving. He broke a couple tackles, but just the 29-yard line. That'll bring up a fourth down. Very impressive defense so far for Okemos. Jackson's had two big plays here on this series. Their very first run went for 13 yards in the pass play that kept the drive going, and now you got fourth and five. From the Okemos 29, the Chiefs lead 7-0. 245, very rapidly played first quarter. Vikes with Bush in the gun. Rolls, looks, throws. A little stop pass incomplete. Okamas takes over. Pass on the sideline. O'Dowd was the intended receiver. And he looks getting, like he is limping off. Yeah, he's got up with a little hitch in his step, too. So a good job there by Okamas. Jackson drove uh, down inside the inside the four down zone but was unable to convert on fourth and six 
Now they really got to pick it up on defense. Trailing uh, seven nothing, and Oakham has got to be very confident. They pitch and try to turn that corner, and they do, and maybe gone, 50, 40, and all the way down inside the 25-yard line. Devin Sims, Derek Sims. Goodness. And Okamas in full command here early with 2.20 to go in the first quarter. Jackson uh, really switched their defense up a little bit there. They had eight in the box. They had no safeties. And they still couldn't stop the quick pitch. That again turned that corner rapidly. And Okamas has a first down. 23-yard line. And we'll get a timeout for Okamas here as they had a little confusion. And we'll take a break here. Jackson down 7 nothing. back in 30 seconds on WKHM. Since our first customer walked through our door, County National Bank has focused on one thing, you. Developing personal relationships allows us to help our customers and community. We've helped thousands of people with mortgages that put them in new homes, invested millions of dollars in our communities, and managed billions for our customers' futures. But it always comes back to one. One relationship with one customer. Bank on one with County National Bank. Stop in to see us or go to countynationalbank.com. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS number 399979. Back to high school football on WKHM, Jackson's News Talk, 970 AM, 101.5 FM. Back at Withington Stadium, very rocky start for Jackson High. Down 7 nothing, and Okemos knocking on the door again. First down at the high, 23. Kaczmarek out of a shotgun. Run a jet sweep, and they turn, oh, big hit there. Solid hit by Brady Lawrence. He well, drilled that running back. Yeah, and that's what Jackson needs a little bit is to maybe impose their will, and uh, it, Brady Lawrence did just drill him to the turf. They still got almost four yards. However, that was the best hit of the night for the Jackson defense. Second down and six, the ball's just inside the 20 yard line. You got about three and a half yards. Boy, 145 left. Blistering pace here in the first quarter. And Kismeric on second down. Up the middle, huge hole there inside the 15. They'll be just short of a first down at the 15-yard line. That's fairly sophisticated there by Alchemus as they switch their tight end after they, that's borderline not legal. They looked like they were set, switched the tight end from the right to the left, and then sent a flanker in motion left. So it was really unbalanced. I think Jackson may have tilted it to their right, and then they just ran a little slide trap right up the gut. Third down and two. Big hit here, but oh, on the tackle, they're going to gain probably enough for the first down. Micah Kretzinger may have been the first man to hit him, but he couldn't bring him down like he normally does, and it uh, did give the ball carrier from Alchemist a little extra step to get that first down. Yeah, Kretzinger just hit him uh, going in the wrong direction. Hit him toward the goal line and gave him that extra yard and a first down at the 13. And this is likely the final play of the first quarter. From the 13, play action. Quarterback hit, had a man wide open for a touchdown and overthrew him. And when you say wide open, there wasn't a Jackson defender anywhere near him. Big tight end That's, was wide open, five yards behind everybody. That was sophomore tight end Jamari Littlejohn and nobody was anywhere near him in the end zone. Fortunately, it was a little bit high. 
quarterback was hit, but he got the ball off in good shape, and then he was drilled. I believe by uh, Lawrence. Second down and 10 from the 13. Jackson got to really stiffen it up here. Because Merrick on the pitch. Try to turn that corner. And they've got Sims down at the 11. Good play by Jackson. Strung that play out and got some help at the 11. We'll bring up a third down and about eight as the clock runs out here in the first quarter. Couple big plays coming up here with Jackson down seven, nothing. We're back in one minute. First quarter in the books. Oakham is seven, Jackson nothing on WKHM. Thank you for listening to this week's edition of High School Football on WKHM. Jackson's News Talk 970 AM 101.5 FM. Minuteman Sewer and Drain is a proud sponsor of local high school athletics and academics in the Jackson and Lansing areas. Minuteman Sewer and Drain, wishing both teams the best of luck in tonight's game and the rest of their season. Now, let's get you back into the game in just a few moments. Minuteman Sewer and Drain, they open drains others can't. Visit MinutemanSewer.com to have them take care of any of your sewer and drain issues. This is Bill Bollinger, president of Ajax Heating and Air Conditioning. While you're enjoying the best in high school sports, I just wanted to say thank you for allowing Ajax to serve the Jackson community for over 70 years and for trusting in us for all your indoor comfort needs. As we welcome our fourth generation into the family business, we will continue to strive to meet the demands of today's market while keeping you, the customer, in the forefront of our goals. Please feel free to give us a call at 784-6149 or visit us online at ajaxheatingcooling.com. Ajax, the home of indoor comfort. Back to high school football on WKHM. Jackson's News Talk, 970 AM, 101.5 FM. Back at Withington, Okemos has the ball at the Jackson 11-yard line with a third and eight. And they lead 7-0. They send trips out to the left. Really spread the field and they run it to the five. Don't get a first down, but that will give them a chance fourth and two. That was a direct snap back to the running back. Very nice call by the Okama staff coach, Mike Crum there and the uh, quarterback just took off. Fourth down and an Probably a long two here from the five. And Okamas shows no penchant to kick a field goal here from the five yard line. Probably in this case, I mean, they really have moved the ball down the field effectively against the Vikings. Full house in the backfield, power set. On fourth. First back through. I don't think he got there. I don't know. See where they put him. Jackson thinks they have held him, but it depends on the spot. First down, Jackson. They hold on fourth down. Enormous play by the Viking defense. And if we could read the numbers, we'd tell you who made the stop. Wow, that was fourth and about two and a half and they got about one and a half. So Jackson 96 yards away. Let's see if that is a lifesaver here. 14 nothing would have been, that would have been tough, tough start. Bush out of the gun, he's standing in the end zone. Hands it off to Edwards, not much. Got over the five to the six. Well, two things there, it didn't look like he had very much room to work with, and number two, he doesn't look at full strength. No. Agreed. But he got them a couple of yards, he got across the 10 up to about the 12 yard line to give him a Actually, he's not to the 10-yard line. He's only up to the 
seven, so he's got a little bit of running room. Second down and eight. Paul Fairchild over that football, out of the gun. They try to turn the corner. Are you kidding me? Lucky to get out of the end zone here. I think that was Dakota. And he was knocked down at the two yard line. Yeah, it's tough to go wide down there. Well, it's at a gain loss of about four or five. Oakham is just dominating the line of scrimmage really both ways here. Well, you know, it, if Oakham would have scored, it would have been one thing to be down 14 to nothing, but to be down and getting physically handled like this is, is it's very disconcerting. Kretzinger in the backfield with Noah Bush. Run a man in motion. They give it to Kretzinger, and he can't get to the four-yard line. Wow. Fourth down for Jackson. And they've got absolutely nothing going here in the first half. That's pretty Here's fair. A team that scored 343 points. That's a pretty fair assessment. And now a rare punt. A rare punt. Good snap. Pretty good kick away from the return man and it rolls past him. Now you gotta tackle him and the first two miss. There's a miss, 40, 35, 30 is gonna go all the way. Touchdown Okamas on the kick return. Richardson goes all the way about 50 yards. Jackson missed a couple tackles up near midfield. Got a good kick out of there. That was, I think Colin Molitor was the uh, uh, punter. Jackson rarely punts, his heels were on the end line. He got rid of it nicely to midfield, it bounced, but then uh, Richardson picked it up and scooted up the left side and Jackson didn't play it very well. And you look up with 8.29 to go in the second quarter, Zolkum is 13, Jackson nothing. Extra point attempt by McGaldy, up and good. 14 nothing, Okemos. Midway second quarter, we're back in 30 seconds. A 970 and 101.5 FM. Advanced Fluid Technologies, a proud member of the Jackson community and proud to be a longtime supporter of high school athletics. Advanced Fluid Technologies has the latest technology in extreme heavy-duty machining and grinding coolants designed for use on ferrous and non-ferrous applications and for stainless and exotic metals. Advanced Fluid Technologies believes in keeping manufacturing a part of Jackson. Successful manufacturing means a successful Jackson. Advanced Fluid Technologies. Back to GOC and Tom Ratchford High School Football on WKHM Jackson's News Talk 970 AM 101.5 FM Back at Withington Stadium Crowd in a Kind of a stunned silence here As Jackson down 14-0 And Okemos Deserves every bit of the 14-0 lead because they have Absolutely Dominated Jackson High at the line of scrimmage. Okemos, as Tom mentioned, lost games to Ann Arbor Skyline, DeWitt, and East Lansing. Here's the kick, short kick. Scooped up. 40, 45, 50, 40. And out of bounds, 35 yard line. I think that was 88, Colin DeCourt. What a play by DeCourt. And that yeah, because that ball was driven, and it, that ball was driven hard on the ground, and a lot of times about that third or fourth bounce, it'll bounce high, and DeCourt was able to field it and get positive yardage all the way up to the Okemos 35-yard line. Only the kicker saved a touchdown there. He was able to slow DeCourt down, and then he got some help from behind. 
And that's what the doctor ordered to try to get Jackson back in this thing. Jackson just looks uh, time a step slow everywhere here. On, yeah, and for the first time all year, a little bit smaller. On, yeah, this is a huge front for Okemos. Here's Bush to Kretzinger. He is hammered. He got uh, maybe a yard. Late whistle there. And Okemos uh, really all over this running game right now. Second down and nine. Yeah. Zaire Ed Edwards uh, broke one run early, but he's been held completely in check. Yeah, they're in a quandary here because you're trying to search for something that's going to work, find a matchup up front that's good, find a running back that can uh, get into a groove. Here's Bush back to throw it, looks. Throws, caught! 20, 15, 10, inside the 10-yard line. First down, Jackson, Micah Kretzinger. Well, and maybe that's what they have to do a little bit more. Jackson's not known as a passing team, but right there, Noah Bush hit Michael Kretzinger in that left uh, seam area uh, up the sideline, and he was able to get a first down, a very nice run after the catch. A good pitch by Bush, a good catch by Micah Kretzinger. Excellent throw by Bush. And Jackson's right at the 10-yard line. They will have to score here in the next four plays. Seven and 26 to go in the first half, 14 nothing Okemos. But Jackson at the 10 yard line and they spread the field. Bush and Edwards in that backfield. Kretzinger in motion. Edwards up the middle, has some running room. He got to about the six. Not a bad play on first down. Get yourself about four yards. Hey, they're going to spot it on the seven, so we'll give them three. But you can tell Tom Edwards is just looks like a, he's a step slow. And, he's, and now he's out of the lineup. He is hurt again. He has had foot injuries, both feet, and he limped off there. And the sophomore, Riley, in the backfield. Kretzinger in motion, Riley. No, they fake it. Late pitch, Kretzinger! Touchdown, Jackson! Great play by Noah Bush. Fake to Riley. They ran that option short side of the field. And Kretzinger, tightrope down that sideline into the end zone. Well, that play had so many great components because the option was run to perfection. First things first, it was that fake inside to bite that linebacker to get that pressure. And then Bush, when he got to the end of the line on that uh, option belly, he was gonna get tackled by the force man and he was able to get it to Kretzinger and now there was nobody else there to tackle him. Jackson on a two point try. And Charles, oh, what a cut for two. Dakota Robertson, a tremendous cut. Looked like Okemos was going to be all over him at the five-yard line. He stuck his foot in the ground, cut back to the end zone. And Jackson back in at 14-8. And we will keep her right here for the kick. So it started with that... Great play on the kickoff by uh, DeCourt. Who you know, ran... So many times special teams do kind of set the pace and set the trend. And uh, more often than not, Jackson, if think about it, Jackson High gave up the touchdown on a bad special teams play when the punt was returned 50-something yards, but then to take that ensuing kickoff and get the ball way across midfield, set up a short field, and allow uh, that uh, touchdown run by Kretzinger and the PAT two-point run by Dakota Robertson. Now with 6.39 to go in the first half, it's Okemos 14, Jackson 8, and now we got a ball game. Orthopedic rehab specialist Tom Coffee, soft water, able heating and cooling. 
Advanced Fluid Technologies, Omni Source, Minuteman Sewer and Drain. Here's the line drive kick, and he drives it right out of bounds. And that will be Okemos Ball 35 yard line. Well, quite a, quite a turnaround because uh, Jackson able to stop Okemos at the four yard line when it looked like they were gonna take a two touchdown lead. They score on the ensuing punt return to go up 14, but Jackson's back in it, but they've uh, got to play much tougher, stouter defense here against this running attack for Okemos, which has been very impressive with their enormous offensive line, two big tight ends. Second back through 40 yard line, five yards on first down. Yeah, it almost seems like Okemos is just dragging Jackson. Yeah, there's some big holes there. Calhoun was so, uh, he might have got his bell rung. He was five yards, at, he went basically went back to by the Okemos huddle. Second, a short five here for the Chiefs. Kazmarek. Hands it off, big hole, first down. Hard running by Sims. Conrad that time. To the 46 yard line and a first down. Clock runs 555, blistering first half here at the stadium. Chase Conrad and Derek Sims in that backfield. Flea flicker. Oh, he got a man wide open. And that'll be interference. Yeah, Jackson. Well, that's bit, interference. Yeah, they bit on the flea flicker and that saved a touchdown. I'm not that that was a great call. Uh, oh, you'll do Jackson, that. Yeah, it's two, a fifteen yard penalty. You'll take that any any time. That should have been a touchdown. Oh, it was a it was gonna be a touchdown without question. They ran the flea flicker. He uh, handed it off, I think, to Sims, got up to the line, tossed it back to the quarterback. Nobody held the tight end up off the line of scrimmage. I think it was eighty four little John. He's he got down the field. Uh, two Jackson kids. He ran right past them, but the two safeties were able to adjust. They got back, and as the ball was coming down, one of them—I can't—I couldn't tell you which one it was—got in the way, kind of face guarded him, bumped him, but did keep him from catching the ball. And it would have been a touchdown. First down, 39-yard line. Second back, hit in the backfield this time. Okay, there's a good play by the Vikings. They had three or four hats right there and they lost a yard and a half back to the 41 yard line. Second down for Okemos. Yeah, very rare time where Jackson has thrown Okemos for a loss. Well, Jackson has uh, really pulled the defense up. They've had eight and nine in the box, but you've got to have somebody back uh, playing center field here. And they've had a couple plays where they've had absolutely no safety. Second down, Kazmarek out of the gun this time. He's going to throw it. Fires it out here, and it is caught. That Great catch at the 34-yard line. Grant Holzer with a fantastic catch over on the Okama sideline. That will bring up a third and five. Pretty decent coverage by the Jackson defensive back on the far side of the field, but Holzer reached out and was able to catch that. Kazmarek gets the play from Coach Mike Crum, 34-yard line. They pitch it, turn the corner, oh, oh, right down the sideline. Here they mark him out of bounds, 23 yard line, easy first down for Okemos. Boy, those backs get to the corner, Tom, in a hurry. And they run hard, and they're, they're good. They are good, Jackson takes a timeout. 
Time out. We take a break. 60 seconds. We'll be back on WKHO. Since our first customer walked through our door, County National Bank has focused on one thing, you. Developing personal relationships allows us to help our customers and community. We've helped thousands of people with mortgages that put them in new homes, invested millions of dollars in our communities, and managed billions for our customers' futures. But it always comes back to one. One relationship with one customer. Bank on one with County National Bank. Stop in to see us or go to countynationalbank.com. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS number 399979. Downtown Jackson is looking good. Come down and see the redesigned streets, improved walkability, redesigned parks, and buildings filled with shops, food, and nightlife. If you haven't been downtown lately, come on down. Hungry? They've got you covered with dining options to suit everyone. There's always something going on, so come down and see all the progress being made in downtown Jackson. This message brought to you by American Title Company of Jackson. Back to high school football on WKHM, Jackson's News Talk, 970 AM, 101.5 FM. Alchemist running backs just running hard, uh, just ran through a couple tackles all the way to the Viking 15-yard line, eight yards on first down. Yeah, I'd like to paint a better picture of this, but this doesn't look good. No, three thirty to go. 3.30 to go in the first half. Olkimus 14, Jackson 8, and Olkimus is on the move. you got Xire Edwards over here on the bench, probably out. He's sitting over here with his helmet off, and he's also played some good defense for this team this year also at, at times when needed. Second, very short. Olkimus can do all kinds of things here from the 15. Good play here by the Vikes. They stop him cold right at the 15-yard line. That was a direct snap back to, I believe, Conrad. And Guillermo Baird, the junior linebacker, up with the stop, 15-yard line, third down. Yeah, you can count on Guillermo Baird and Brady Lawrence and Kretzinger to make a lot of tackles. Third and three from the 15. Play action. Oh, big hit on the quarterback. Goodness. Was that hard, Rick? Quarterback is absolutely buried back near the 25. They'll put it at the 24. Outside linebacker Zion Hardrick on a corner blitz from the left side was able to absolutely drill Mason Kazmarek, the quarterback. How did he hold on to the ball, Tom? And the thing was, it was a play-action fake. So, you know, uh, Kazmarek had his back to the uh, to Hardrick when uh, he didn't saw him coming. And he hit him face on, but uh, what a great play by Jackson. Sets up fourth down and 11. Big play here, fourth and 11. Kazmarek back to throw. He fires. Intercepted. 20, 30, 40, 50, 40, 30. Go! Touchdown, Jackson. No flags. Pass pickoff for a touchdown. About 85 yards. Do you believe it? Unbelievable! We're tied at 14! Incredible play out there. And how they could not knock him out. What a tremendous run, Ranch. Three people, three Okemos or four Okemos kids had a chance to make that tackle. And uh, I think it was Mike... It was Micah Kretzinger. It was Micah Kretzinger who caught that ball on the far sideline in the flat, and he uh, made a beautiful interception. It was fourth and 11. It went 85 yards. Extra point up and good. Jackson has the lead. They've scored 15 unanswered. Unbelievable play by number 21, Micah Kretzinger. Stepped in and picked it off. And it looked like he might get it back to about midfield. Just a miraculous run, the final 50 yards down the sideline for big number 21. And just amazing how a game can get turned upside down when Jackson has been 
really dominated Tom in this first half well, and they it, lead. Yeah, it takes a total team effort. I was just thinking to myself, you know, I'm trying to think of some way Jackson could bounce back and actually get into this game and now they're in it with a lead with a minute and 26 to go. A couple of very nice plays, two scores within the last five minutes of playing time and uh, what was on the verge of you know getting run out of the place with a 14 to nothing lead by Olkamas, you look up and Jackson leads 15 to 14, minute 26 to go here in the first half. You know the key play, really that sack by Hardrick. That was a third and about four or five. That forced him to throw the ball on fourth down and Kretzinger makes the absolute gem on defense. Here's the little pop fly punch kick and a fair catch at the 25 yard line. And Okamas now. They gotta be in shock. They have really dominated this game. And they look up at the scoreboard and they're getting beat 15-14. You just never you know, know. You know, that can have an impact on you, too, because you Absolutely. are. They have dominated this uh, game. Unbelievable play. I don't do. I'm still shaking my head how he made that last 50 he yards. Told right down Without that going out of bounds. Here's a running play. Jackson's got it back at the 25 for a loss of a yard. That tackle was made by Benoit Richards. He came from the back side. Good job. Well, the, they're finally getting some play up front by those defensive linemen. You know, a lot of times, I mean, these are long games. They're two hours long, and you, you just can't go by the first couple of drives. But uh, hopefully Jackson, pers you know, they we've seen that they can persevere. They came back from a 13-0 deficit on the road against an excellent Monroe Trojan team back in week three. A little bit different story here, doing it at home, uh, of course, makes it easier, but there's so much more at stake here in the playoffs. Yeah, Oakham is not in any hurry here. They're going to snap it to the running back. He hands it off, hitting the backfield. Back at the 20-yard line. And, Tom, you got to think Okamas is going to be a little gun-shy about throwing the ball well, here. They're gun-shy right now running it, too. Well, you're just, they're just running the clock out. They just want to get into the locker room. Well, if they were going to do that, why didn't they just take a knee? Well, exactly. They're, they weren't. They were, they were trying to run a couple plays there. We have hit halftime. Just an amazing end to the first half. Jackson down 14-0 has rallied. Behind Micah Kretzinger. He scored the touchdown on the running play on a brilliant run down the sideline. And then on defense, he went about 85 yards right down the sideline. And Jackson leads 15-14. Three-minute break. We'll be back at the half on WKHM, WKHM.com, around the world for trips, auto shop, and collision center. Denny's Super Slam is just $5.99. I'm sure you've heard the jingle. $5.99? Are you out of your mind? Yeah, that one. It comes with eggs, hash browns, bacon, sausage, and now with your choice of buttermilk or pumpkin pancakes. Pumpkin pancakes? Are you out of your mind? Right? I thought the same thing. Although it is fall, so pumpkin pancakes don't seem that crazy. $5.99? Are you out of your mind? No, you're right. That does sound a little crazy. The $5.99 Super Slam from Denny's. Limited time only. Price and participation may vary. No substitutions. Upgrade to pumpkin pancakes for 49 cents. Every day is a great day to be a Viking. Believe the hype. Hello, this is Jeff Beal, superintendent for Jackson Public Schools, and I have never been more excited to begin a school year. Construction is beginning around the district with new and expanded programming from caring young fives through innovative early college options. Jackson Public Schools is committed to the success of your student. We are building a safer, stronger 21st century district. Join the excitement and enroll today. Jackson Public Schools, where community comes together. 
What makes a restaurant a gathering place for families, businesses, and friends? Well, everything you'll find at Candy's Busy Bee Cafe. Candy and her crew are the kind of people who get birthday cards for the regulars. Candy's Busy Bee Cafe is the kind of place you'll want to come back to after just one visit. Tableside service, great conversations, incredible staff, and tremendous food with breakfast served from open to close. Become a regular today at Candy's Busy Bee Cafe in downtown Jackson. Let me ask you a quick question. Have you been putting it off? And by it, I mean filling out that college application, scholarship, or financial aid form. Hey, they can be intimidating. What if I fill it out wrong? How do I make sure it's not red flag? Well, that's easy. Your free assistance is available thanks to the College and Career Access Center inside the Jackson Crossing Mall. Their mission is to help you get the post-high school accreditation, training, or degree you need to be successful in life. The College and Career Access Center. Help for all ages. Thank you for listening to this week's edition of High School Football on WKHM, Jackson's News Talk 970 AM, 101.5 FM. Miniman Sewer and Drain is a proud sponsor of local high school athletics and academics in the Jackson and Lansing areas. Miniman Sewer and Drain, wishing both teams the best of luck in tonight's game and the rest of their season. Now, let's get you back into the game in just a few moments. Miniman Sewer and Drain, they open drains others can't. Visit MinutemanSewer.com to have them take care of any of your sewer and drain issues. At Seymour Ford Lincoln, it's their honesty and the best products in the market that keep their customers coming back. Seymour Ford Lincoln features a fantastic selection of new and certified pre-owned vehicles to fit your lifestyle. Get a 2018 Ford Fusion SE. AZ plan lease 153 a month for 24 months with 10,500 miles per year. With $1,000 down, plus first payment tax, title, license, and fees. Requires RCL renewal. See dealer for details. All factory rebates to dealer. Offer expires October 31st, 2018. For full inventory, visit SeymourFord.com. Back to high school football on WKHM, Jackson's News Talk, 970 AM, 101.5 FM. Welcome back. Hard to explain that first half. I'll just tell you, it's 15-14. Jackson, and you're just kind of scratching your head wondering how Jackson's leading by a point, but they are. Let's get some well, scores from the out-of-town games with Tom. Well, over at Lumen Christie, uh, Nick Thomas has scored three touchdowns. Delton Langley has another one. Um, I don't have the player who scored the fourth, but uh, Lumen Christie has a 34-7 lead over Napoleon near the end of the first half. The Michigan Center Grass Lake game is good and close. Michigan Center leads seven to nothing, uh, still in the second quarter. Got an absolutely wild one over at Columbia Central. Garrig Elliott returned a punt after the first series of downs by Quincy for a touchdown. Quincy scored. Garrig Elliott then scored on a the kickoff return that ensued. It's just been wild. With 4.23 to go in the second quarter, it's Columbia Central 34, Quincy 13. So just a wild one over at Columbia Central. Nick Thomas just scored for the Titans, so it's now 40 to 7, Lumen Christie. And. I don't have the time, but it's still in the first half. Lumen Christie 40, Napoleon 7. Update the Michigan Center Grass Lake score. It's Michigan Center 7, Grass Lake nothing at the half. Um, in Division 3, Madawan leads Jackson County Western 6 0. Uh, that score was in the first quarter. Uh, the winner of our game will play the winner of the Portage Northern Portage Central game. It's all Northern. Portage Northern leads 21 to nothing over Portage Central. That is at the half. Um, Muskegon Mona Shores in Division Two was leading Forest Hill Central 14 nothing. South Lion leads Dexter 14 seven, and a little bit closer to home, Mark Sauber checked in reading in Division Eight had a 20 to nothing lead over Pittsford, reading 20, Pittsford nothing. Okay, let's take a two minute break this week in high school sports. And we'll be back here in about 
uh, seven, eight minutes or so and get you rolling with the second half, get more scores. Our out-of-town scores, by the way, brought to you by AAA of Jackson on Wisner Street. They handle all your insurance and travel needs at AAA of Jackson. We'll be back. Again, we're at the half. Jackson 15, Okemos 14 on WKHM. Back to GOC and Tom Ratchford High School Football on WKHM. Jackson's News Talk 970 AM, 101.5 FM. Back at Withington, if you turned us off uh, toward the end of that first half, Jackson scored 15 points in the last uh, half of the second quarter. And they lead 15-14. Let's get the out-of-town score update. Brought to you by AAA of Jackson on Wisner Street. They handle all your insurance and travel needs at AAA of Jackson. Tom? Town. Out of town, Napoleon Lumen Christi, Division 6, Titans of Lumen Christi lead 40 to 7 at the half. Grass Lake and Michigan Center, it's center 7, Grass Lake nothing. Columbia Central has a 40 to 13 lead over Quincy. And I don't have anything yet in on the Blissfield at Hillsdale game. In Division 3, Jackson County Western has come back. They now lead 14 to 6 over Matawan. So in Division 3, Western leads Matawan 14-6. In the other game in that district, it's uh, TK Middleville. Thornapple Kellogg Middleville leads Portage, uh, leads Battle Creek Central 17-13, and that's very near the end of the first half. In Division 2, our winner will play Portage Northern, it looks like, as Portage Northern leads Portage Central 21-0. Also in Division Two, Mona Shores leads Forest Hill Central 28 to 14. In Division Seven, it's uh, got a good game. Sand Creek and Monroe St. Mary Catholic Central are tied at 28 late in the first half. Reading now has a 28-7 lead over Pittsford in Division Eight. The winner of that game, which is going to be Reading, is going to play Ottawa Lake Whiteford as Whiteford leads Lenaway Christian 38 to nothing. A couple notable out-state scores. First of all, uh, Hudsonville Unity Christian leads Grand Rapids West Catholic 24 to nothing. Montague leads uh, Fenville 35 nothing. Montague is a force to be reckoned with in Division Six. And how about this in Division Six? Millington at the half leads Ithaca 29 to 13. Wow. Wow. Millington really got in the playoffs with that win. Uh, their final game. Here's our opening kick, second half. It's an onsider. The ball is loose. Look out. Okemos has it. Jackson dropped it. Got a taste of their own medicine here. Jackson is very good at these onside kick situations. and Boy, that was a perfect onside kick. Yeah. I don't know if they caught him by surprise or what happened over there. I don't think so. They... Uh, Right when the Viking went up to grab it, he got drilled, and that ball was up for grabs. You know, that's, you tip your cap to somebody that, that can execute that because that's just the way you teach it. So Alchemist takes over at the Jackson High 45. Well, that hurts. And Kesmerich on first down from the Viking 45. Straight dive play up the middle. Good running room to the... 39-yard line. That'll be six yards on first down, and that's kind of what we saw in the first half. Second down and four for the Chiefs. So, Okemos a big onside kick to start the second half. They get the football. And on second and short, same play. Going to be short of a first down, bring up a third, about two, maybe a short two from the 37-yard line, just two yards there. They've got Conrad and Derek Sims in the backfield, the quarterback, Mason Kismarek, enormous 
offensive line. Third and two. Third back. Hit! 35 yard line, I think it's gonna be, well, it's gonna be close. Depends where they put it. Looked like it was Brady Lawrence, his helmet did come off. Oh, they gave it to him, wow. I'm shocked that they did not mark, uh, bring the chains out on that one, but they didn't. Gave him a first down, 35 yard line. Fans down here below us doing a little howling. I don't think they like the spot. And a first down for the Chiefs at the 35. GLC time, Ranchford, Josh Hankrell, Tony Mack here at Withington. Double wides to the left, they shift. They go in motion, they fake the pitch, the quarterback throws, caught all the way, touchdown. That was a great throw and a great catch because Jackson's coverage was not terrible there. But that was a time a great throw by Kesmeri. Yeah, you're right. And the, I, I don't have the receiver. I think it's the tall kid, 84, Little John, and he went up and grabbed it high. And that, you, again, they out executed you there. Jackson had people in the right spot. Man, that was a very nice throw by Kesmeri and a, a very nice pattern. And. Uh, with 9.56 to go in the third quarter, it's Okemos 20, Jackson 15. Jackson had a defender coming off the corner. I know the fans saw that, that he got grabbed. Just Now they fake, and they throw for two, and he dropped the ball. Incredible. They had an easy two points. Sims they really faked the Vikings out and dropped the ball in the end zone. Brooke Robinson simply dropped it, and he was open. They had they had faked Jackson High completely out. So that kind of changes things a little bit. 9.56 to go, third quarter. Olkimus has a 20-15 to 15 lead over the Vikes. 30-second break. We're right back with the Olkimus kick on WKHM. Hi, my name is Bob Richardson. I'm the owner of the Yes Siree Bob Subways here in Jackson and Hillsdale County. We have a box lunch that we put together for teams or groups. We do a six inch sandwich, a chip, a cookie, and a bottle of water for $5.75. This is just a program that we've tried to put together to help accommodate those teams, those groups of kids that are together. And if there's any interest in any of that, you can call Matt in my office and the number there is 748-9240. Back to high school football on WKHM. Jackson's News Talk, 970 AM, 101.5 FM. Back at Withington, Okemos kicking off. Kicked a short one last time and it paid off. They kicked a short one this time. It's picked up 35. Hang on to it. They get out to the 40. So good field position for the Vikings who trail now by 5, 20 to 15. Is that DeCourt again? Yeah, number eight, number 88, Colin DeCourt again on that kickoff uh, coverage. So Jackson's first play on offense. The ball right at the 40. Kretzinger in motion. Takes the comeback handoff. And he is hit hard at the 42. Head over heels. Boy, I'm surprised how physical Okemos is. Oh, they're beating the tar out of Jackson up front. They really are. They gave Kretzinger three yards. That was kind of a gift. Second and seven. I think Edwards is in the backfield. Although you can't read the numbers. Second down and seven, Robertson. 
I think he might need some more touches here. He's in motion. Give to Edwards. Dances. Good run by Edwards. He stretches it out to about the 49-yard line. Good job in the hole by Edwards as he avoided a couple tacklers there and brings down a third, brings up a third and one. He's obviously not himself, but there's no tomorrow. Yeah, he's limping off the field, but they bring uh, Riley, the sophomore, in the backfield. Third down a yard. There's Riley. Hit hard. He got a first down. Got his nose over the 50. You know, they put it right at, boy, they didn't give him much. Wow. But they gave him a first down right at midfield. And the clock runs eight to go here in the third quarter on WKHL. Tonight's game, our presenting sponsor, Trips Auto Shop and Collision Center, the right repair, no accident at Trips. On first, Bush. Back to throw, in trouble, that pass up in the air and dropped. Oh, that should have been intercepted. Just That might be the biggest faux pas of the season for Noah Bush. He threw a ball straight up in the air that should have been intercepted, and 84 uh, dropped get, it. Didn't he get hit while he was throwing it? That's why it was just... I don't know what happened, but it went straight up. It was pretty bad, and then the poor kid from Olkabus kind of stumbled, and I think he got the ball in his midsection as he fell. Uh, that would have been, I think it was 24, Brooke Robinson, the same kid that mishandled that PAT uh, catch on that two-point conversion pass. So anyway, Jackson's still got the ball, second and 10 from right at midfield, 7.31 to go in the third quarter. Holcomus with a 20-15 to 15 lead over Jackson. So Jackson really gets a break there, midfield at the 50. And Bush, they run that draw play to Kretzinger. He rolls through tacklers. Look at Kretzinger to the 35-yard line in a first down. Well, what a horse. Just as you mentioned, probably Dakota Robertson needs to get the ball in his hands a few more times. Certainly Micah Kretzinger does. But remember, Kretzinger is so important defensively as well. But again, there's no tomorrow. They can rest uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, he's obviously vital to this football team. 36 yard line, they spot the football. That was a big time run by Kretzinger. And a first down, 36 yard line. Okamas 20, Jackson 15. Oh, Kretzinger was in motion. The snap hit him. And Jackson's lucky to have the ball at the 40. All season long, that never happened. That was the shotgun snap from Paul Fairchild back to Bush, but it clipped. Was it Kretzinger in motion, and it just kind of clipped him, and luckily Jackson was able to fall on it. Six twenty to go in the third, clock running. Third quarter brought to you by Miniman Sewer and Drain Cleaning. They open drains, others can't at Minuteman, sewer and drain cleaning. Second and 14. Here's Bush in trouble, throws it, intercept. Oh, that one's dropped. That should have been picked off. Now that one, he had no business throwing. No, you can't throw that yeah. ball. Wow, first time Noah Bush has been under duress all season and uh, things are kind of unraveling here. Well, the offensive line. Yeah, that was one of those. Not blocking very well here. Yeah, that was one player that snuck through that time, though. The, the, the first one, there were about three of them. That was one little one guy that got through. Third down and 14 from the 40. 
But it's the same old story. When you can't run and you have to throw, you're putting it up on a tee for them. Bush rolls. They throw a little middle screen. It's caught by Kretzinger. He's down. He has a first down. 23-yard line. I'm well, shocked there was not a flag, Well, Tom. get the ball into your best player's hands no matter how you can do it. And you have to be able to uh, run that screen, a middle screen. Tom, it looked Cre like the whole offensive front was about 10 yards downfield. Pretty, pretty shocked that there was no flag. But we'll take it, 22-yard line, Kretzinger dragging tacklers around here in the Vikings. Get a first down on that big third and 14 middle screen. Boy, I haven't seen that all year. Here's Bush. Hands to Edwards. Edwards runs over a tackler at about the 18-yard line. He just limps his way back into the huddle. Boy, you got to give him a lot of credit. He is hurting, but he's out there playing. That's a pickup of almost five yards. 18-yard line for the Vikings, second down. Clock running, 5.15 in the third. Oakham is 20, Jackson 15. Here on WKHM, WKHM.com, around the world. Robertson in motion. Bush keeps it, 15-10. Bush is down inside the five-yard line, Noah Bush. To be honest with you, that's what they do much better than throwing the ball, and that was that uh, belly on that veer by Noah Bush, and he made an excellent football run on that. And the Jackson kids are still running out their fakes. They just need to get a little bit of momentum because, quite honestly, Okemos is beating the tar out of them up front but they need a couple of breaks and a play like that because I think that's the first time Bush has run the option from that quarterback position. You have to be able to get it inside the quarterback and outside to be able to run that thing effectively. Bush out of the gun from the four-yard line. And Edwards is going to be drilled back at the seven. Boy, you got to run straight ahead down here and not sideways. Yeah, he's not himself, no, no question about it. That one hurts back to almost the eight yard line. In fact, they'll put it right at the eight. That is a loss of four yards on first down. Second and goal from the eight. Yeah, and that was out of a spread formation with receivers all over the place. They were just trying to open up the field a little bit and get some creases to run in. Sometimes you're best off just going right straight at them. The sophomore Riley back there with Bush. And he has it, slashes, drives, touchdown Vikings! Dorian Riley, the sophomore, ran over a couple defenders at the three yard line and dragged them into the end zone. And Jackson's back in front, 21-20. Pretty good run there by Riley. It didn't look like a clean exchange between Bush and Dorian Riley, but he was able to get just to the line of scrimmage and sneak through an eight yard touchdown run. So with 4.45 to go in the third quarter, it is Jackson High 21, Okemos 20. Extra point up and good. Quinton Smith on the kick. Vikings lead by two, 22-20, we're back in 30 seconds. A 970 and 101.5 FM. Orthopedic Rehab Specialist has the Jackson area's highest rated physical therapy clinics with a 98% patient satisfaction rating. For over 31 years, ORS has treated nagging back pain, knee pain, shoulder and neck pain, sports and work injuries, and total joint replacement therapy. So when your doctor recommends physical therapy, choose ORS. That's Orthopedic Rehab Specialist. Call us today at 877-202-2175 or visit us online at orsmi.com. Back to high school football on WKHM, Jackson's News Talk, 970 AM, 101.5 FM. Back here for Trips Auto Shop and Collision Center. What a game, 445 to go in the third. Jackson 22, Okemos 20. 
Opening round of the high school football playoffs. Quinton Smith. Here's the kick. He kicks it long this time. And this will... Wow, it goes out of bounds at the four-yard line. That's a tough break there. Kicked it right over everybody's head. But again, angled it. And it just trickled out, out of bounds. And that will give... Okamas the ball at the 35 yard line. Third quarter for Minute Man Sewer and Drain Cleaning. They open the drains, others cannot. And the Chiefs back out. Mason Kazmarek, the senior quarterback. To the tailback. There we go. And he's stuffed up, drilled backwards. That's Chase Conrad. Got about three yards out to the 38. They were in that counter trap inside and got a nice block, and Zion Hardrick filled very well. One of the linebackers was with him. I think it was Kegel Johnson inside. Let's see if we can keep them from getting any momentum here. They've been so successful, Tom, on first down. That's been the yeah. key. That's one of the best jobs on first down, just to give them three. It sets up second and seven. Because Merrick's in the shotgun set this time. Now it's unbalanced. He moves forward, no flag, and look out. This play all the way to Jackson. There is a flag back in the deep in the secondary, but the quarterback really, he was moving forward and we are not in Canada. But they are going to bring this one back. They've rare, run that, rare penalty. They've run that a couple of times where the tight end Little John was set, leaves, goes to the other side, so he went from the right to the left, then they motioned to their left and ran it that way. Very unbalanced and you know, Jackson has a decision to make because if they adjust to that Okamas has shown that they'll come back the other way. Bottom so, line is you can run all the formations you want. You can run all the motions you want. If you're blocking better than... Yeah, this is a big, yeah. good offensive line. They have been tough. Second and a dozen, because Merrick's going to throw it. Down the middle. Incomplete and a flag, and that's going to be either a hold or a pass interference. He pump fake, Kazmarek pump fake, and I think on the pump fake, the Jackson High defender uh, engaged the receiver right at about the 50-yard line. Kretzinger was back there. He had a better chance to catch the ball than the receiver. The officials talk it over. Maybe it's offensive interference. Holding Jackson. Wow, I, I five yards. I suspect what happened was because the ball was thrown, uh, by the time the flag was thrown, uh, when Kazmarek pump faked, Jackson High's kid hit that receiver and knocked him off his path. That's why the ball wasn't anywhere near him. Oh, 10 yard walk off, second and two. And the direct snap back to Crosby. Oh, he's drilled. Did not get the first down. Be a yard short. Much Micah more. Kretzinger was there. Yeah, he's just a, a beast. He is a fantastic football player, along with Brady Lawrence and Guillermo Baird. Those kids are, that's a pretty good crew of, uh, uh, of defensive players there. Third down and a yard. Good play there by Brady Lawrence, but they get the yard. Chase Conrad on the carry. Lawrence's helmet fell off for the second time here in this quarter. This time the official saw it and made him leave. I was hoping that was the ball, but it was the helmet. And a first down Okemos, so that penalty costly. 
And Okemos has a first down at their own 47. They pitch and try to turn the corner. Pretty good contain and a good hit by Jackson well, at real, the 49-yard line. Real good contain over there because uh, the man was able to keep his outside arm free, widened it up a little bit, and just allowed enough time, widened it out so the Jackson High scrape linebackers could get over there and make that play. That gets Lawrence back in the game. Well, this clock is flying. Two minutes and 20 seconds left in the third quarter. Jackson High leads 22 to 20. Power running set. Second back. Jackson's got him. Lost uh, about two yards. And it's going to bring up a third and nine. Big play here, third and nine. We have not seen Okemos punt this evening. Brady Lawrence and Malachi Kretzinger on that tackle. And Jackson's punted once, and that was bad. Was from nine yards in their own end zone. And that was a 50-yard return for a touchdown by Okemos. Third and nine, Kazmeri. Back to pass, he's being chased. He's gonna run, he's gonna be hit! Down he goes! Brady Lawrence is a great football player for the Vikes, and he chased Kazmarek down on that. Uh, it's like Lumen Christie's fake trap at two pass, and he rolled to the right, and Lawrence dragged him down. It's going to set up fourth down and ten. First punt of the night for Okemos, Brady Lawrence. Been terrific all season. A couple big plays here lately for the Viking defense. Kretzinger's back there with, might be Stitz, I'm not sure. Fake, they run it and look out, 40, first down. Vikings completely taken by surprise. First down, Okemos 31 yard line. Well, Kretzinger was back to receive the punt and he made that tackle. Good thing he was there to make that tackle. He was, I think, untouched. The Okemos ball carrier on the fake punt right up the gut. Ran it right up the middle. Unbelievable. 22 yards, fake punt, first down Okemos. It's going to be a sideline warning against Okemos coach Mike Crum. Boy, a couple killer plays in the second half. The opening kick, the onside kick that Jackson lost, and boy, this one, you finally had them stop, fourth and a dozen, and they run right up the middle and get the first down. From the 32. Rolling wide open in the flat. Trouble here, 20, 15, 10. Five and don't think he got in, but he's close. Gonna mark him out at about the one yard line. Wow, Chase Conrad out of the backfield and you cannot be more wide open. There was, yeah. Jackson had no coverage in the flat. Yeah, it was that counter pass. Uh, it's like the Titans trap pass and everybody bit. And uh, when Kazmarek rolled, there was nobody there to stop him. And touchdown, Okemos on the first play from the one yard line. And they jump back in the lead, 26-22. Fake punt, you gotta give Okemos a lot of credit. They have pulled out all the stops here. Onside kick, fake punt. The uh, flea flicker, Tom, that probably flea should have flicker. been a touchdown. Yeah, should have. Scored on a punt return. And Okemos will come out here and go for two. Up by four points. And Kazmierik fakes the handoff, looks and throws. That is caught, whoa, wow. Big hit right at the they goal line, but they him. give it to him. Wow. 
What a catch by Conrad. He was just absolutely corked. Right at the goal line, they give him the two. 28-22, Okemos back in 30 on WKHM. Thank you for listening to this week's edition of High School Football on WKHM. Jackson's News Talk 970 AM 101.5 FM. Minuteman Sewer and Drain is a proud sponsor of local high school athletics and academics in the Jackson and Lansing areas. Minuteman Sewer and Drain, wishing both teams the best of luck in tonight's game and the rest of their season. Now, let's get you back into the game in just a few moments. Minuteman Sewer and Drain, they open drains others can't. Visit MinutemanSewer.com to have them take care of any of your sewer and drain issues. Back to high school football on WKHM, Jackson's News Talk, 970 AM, 101.5 FM. Third quarter for Bennett Mansour and Drain Cleaning. They open the drains, others cannot open. Comes Okemos on the kick. They lead now 28-22, 12 seconds to go. Here in the third on WKHL. Short kick. Jackson drops it. They pick it up and run with it. Hang on. 38-yard line. Kegel Johnson grabbed that, and at least he covered it. He dropped it at one point. It's a very dangerous situation on these uh, live balls. So 8.3 seconds to go in the third quarter. Olkimus leads 28-22. to 22. Been quite a game. Probably one play here in the third. We haven't had a close game. Not really. All year. Uh, Chelsea. Yep. Jackson at Chelsea was close right down to the end. That was it. I went back through our playlist and went through our the 10 games that we've done so far and everything has been a blowout. Bush back there with Riley. Bush back to throw it. Throws it long. Kretzinger, what a catch! Do you believe it? Kretzinger makes a miraculous catch at the 38-yard line. Find some way to get it in his hands. It's obvious that Edwards is having trouble. Dorian Riley, the sophomore, is okay, but he's, you know, but get the ball into Kretzinger's hands and maybe Dakota Robertson a little bit, and let's uh, get this thing going here in the fourth. That ends the third with a spectacular play by Micah Kretzinger. Back in a minute. Fourth quarter coming up on WKHM. Thank you for listening to this week's edition of High School Football on WKHM. Jackson's News Talk 970 AM 101.5 FM. Minuteman Sewer and Drain is a proud sponsor of local high school athletics and academics in the Jackson and Lansing areas. Minuteman Sewer and Drain, wishing both teams the best of luck in tonight's game and the rest of their season. Now, let's get you back into the game in just a few moments. Minuteman Sewer and Drain, they open drains others can't. Visit MinutemanSewer.com to have them take care of any of your sewer and drain issues. Looking for a new way to reward your employees? Tired of the same old company picnics? Add some adrenaline to your event and move it to the Jackson Speedway. Whether you're looking for a team-building event or an innovative, fast-paced fundraiser, the Jackson Speedway can customize an event specifically for your team. For more info, log on to jacksonspeedway.net. They'll provide everything you need from safety equipment and carts. You just need to bring your appetite for speed. Your next fundraiser, team-builder, or gather awaits at jacksonspeedway.net. Back to GOC and Tom Ratchford High School Football on WKHM Jackson's News Talk 970 AM 101.5 FM Jackson on first down hands off to Riley he just gets back to the line of scrimmage against this big Okemos front Riley not having the success he had last week he just ran roughshod over uh, Lake Fenton. Did have a nice run though on that eight yard touchdown scamper. In fact, he lost a yard there, second and 11. Bush out of the gun, Robertson, no, Bush keeps it. 
Good run by Noah Bush down to the 31-yard line. One of the dimensions of running the option offense is the fact that you have to distribute it inside, outside, and have the quarterback run. And that's maybe the third time Bush has attempted to run today. Wow, and that's, crappy spot. And that's very necessary to be able to run this offense because you can't just keep giving the ball to one kid. Third down and five. I thought Bush made the, about the 31. They spot it back at the 33. We are underway in the fourth. Jackson down by six. 28-22. And Riley to about the, well, they're just going to give him the 31. Boy, they, Okemos has been so tough up between the tackles. And Scott's got to come up with one here. It's fourth and a solid three. They need to hit about the 28-yard line. And the high will spread the field. Kretzinger hit in the backfield. Not a prayer. Not a prayer. That ball goes over to Okemos, and now it's really good up to the Jackson defense. They're going to have to. They're going to have to get a stop here, and the Vikings have a player down. And we have an injury timeout. Out of town scores brought to you by Triple A of Jackson on Wisner Street. Handling all your insurance and travel needs. Nine minutes to go in the third quarter. It's Lumen Christie 46, Napoleon 14. End of the third quarter, it's Michigan Center 21, Grass Lake nothing. So it does look like it'll be Michigan Center at Lumen Christie for the Division 6 district next Friday night. Also in Division 6, Garrick Elliott has just had a whale of a game. He returned a punt for a touchdown, returned a kickoff for a touchdown. Columbia leads Quincy 47-13 to very late in that game. In Division 3, Western has come back. It's uh, actually, Matt, they've come back. It's been back and forth. Matawan and Western are tied at 14 at the end of the third quarter in Division 3. Portage Northern is going to be uh, advancing to play the winner of this game. It's Portage Northern 28, Portage Central nothing. Uh, Muskegon Mona Shores leads Forest Hill Central 28-14. Um, got one final in up north. Iron River West Iron County beat Rogers City 28-8. Bikes got to come up with some defense here. 31 yard line. And look out, they bust one right up the middle again. They're trapping that right up front. And something that uh, I haven't seen all season against Jackson High, and maybe the teams in our league don't, don't do it, but uh, they're really getting great yardage, as you mentioned, on first down. They're six yards on first down, setting up second and four. Yeah, first down has just killed the Jackson defense tonight. And we're down to 9-10 to go. Second back, hit hard at the 40, but falls forward to the 41. Bring up a third down and one. Derek Sims, the carry. Uh, third and about two. Okamas up very quickly. And run it up the middle for a first down. Just power football to the 44. Can't stop them. And they haven't come close, Tom, to fumbling the ball tonight. I hope you talk them into it. I'm trying to. <laughs> they had that one interception, of course, that Micah Kretzinger returned yeah. 85 yards for a score. But other than that, they've played a pretty clean game. Eight and a half to go. Okemos 28, Jackson 22. 
Kazmarek from the 45. Right up the gut, nothing there. Bikes stuff that one. Okay, one of the few times they have stopped Okamas on first down. Brady Lawrence ended up with the ball. He came out with the ball and took off with it. Pretty large Jackson crowd, not happy with that. And they're never gonna give that to you. That's obviously forward momentum had stopped, but. Got a yard second and nine. Of more concern is to stop this play. Kazmarek up the middle, look out, all the way to the Jackson. It's that delay handoff. To that fullback, and it's that belly handoff, and he's got a first down Jackson 38-yard line. They haven't been able to stop that all night. Yeah, that was Chase Conrad on the carry, and it's just that little delay, and if you're not reading your keys properly, that's what happens. Time is dwindling. We're down to seven minutes and 45 seconds to go in the game. Okamas 28, Jackson 22. Okamas with the ball now inside the Jackson 40 down to the Jackson 38 where it's first and 10. Thirty-eight yard line, right up the chute. Not much there. They don't blow the whistle. They finally blow the whistle. See, I'm not so sure I heard the whistle blow on the one Lawrence ended up with the ball. And to be honest, my only objection with the officials is that the MHSAA. You know, in our league, we play with seven officials all year, and then you come here and there's there's only five, and that gives the back judge too much ground to cover. And what would be the harm of having those two extra guys here? Up the middle, good run down to the 29. It's going to bring up third down and one, and Okamas continues to drag Jackson up and down the field. They and, just can't get off the field. Uh, and the goofy thing with the officials is the state does this for the first three games. The pre-district, district, and regional are only five officials, and then they bring seven out for the semis and the finals. Oh, I don't know if they got it there. That was third and just a yard if they did. Yep, they're going to give it to them. Give them a first down at the 28. This clock is running out rapidly. Vikes need to make a play on defense in a hurry. Touchdown here and you might not have enough time. And a field goal, you need two scores. I don't see him going in that direction. This running play, they tried to turn that corner. They got a couple of yards pretty to good, the 26. Pretty good job by the Jackson defense that time. That was a straight T, but it was an offset straight T to the right. So they had an awful lot of people there. And uh, the Vikes on the far side of the field were able to come up and make the play. He still got almost three yards. This clock is just running out. 5.20 to go. In the game, 28-22, Okemos. Kazmarek, one running back. He slips it up the middle. Nobody, Jackson misses a tackle. They look like they have a first down, or they're close to it. They're probably just a tad short. And one of the Vikings limps off, but you can't read his number. Come on, defense! 19-yard line, third and a yard. Come on, Seems like Okemos has had about 100, third down and a yard. And easy first down to the 13. Well, I mentioned it right from the outset that Okemos was dragging Jackson up and down the field, and quite honestly, they're beating the tar out of him 
Give Jackson an awful lot of credit for keeping this thing close. Four and a half minutes to go in the game. Okemos leads 28-22. And the Vikes need a stop right now. Or a mishandle of the ball somehow. Okemos is a little confused. They're having trouble getting 11 players on the field. Clock is now running. First down, 13 yard line. Right up the chute. Get to the 12. Second and nine. That was Conrad. He has done a solid job. Chase Conrad. Guillermo Baird on the tackle. Second down and nine. There haven't been many second and nines tonight for the Chiefs. Kazmarek gets the play from Mike Crum. We are down to 335. Conrad has to leave for an equipment. Um, that's why the referee stopped the clock. Yeah, uh, the good running back for Okemos, Chase Conrad, had to leave with an equipment uh, issue. So he left, and they didn't. They're finally now. Mike Crum is just finally sending a player in. Three twenty to go. Now a timeout, Okemos. Yeah, they were all kinds of messed up. Take quick break, 30 break. We're right back on WKHM. I'm Dr. Randolph Penn. I run and operate Penn Chiropractic Center. Well, there's no one that is immune to stress. We can't remove it, whether we're infants, children, youth sports, high school sports. Stress accumulates over time. Best thing to do is get checked right from the beginning, right from birth, through growth and development. And as we maintain and manage those stressors throughout life, this is how we're able to keep people at a high level. And our patients are the healthiest patients in town. If being at your best health is a goal this year, begin your journey today. DocPenn.com. Back to high school football on WKHM, Jackson's News Talk, 970 AM, 101.5 FM. Three seventeen to go. Second down, 13-yard line for Okemos. They can, they can wrap up a win here. With a score, Jackson's got to hold him out. And they've got to come up with some magic. I do not believe Okemos will dare throw the ball. And they hand it off. Good job. Vikings have them at the 11. And it's going to bring up a third and long. Third and about seven. Scott Farley's got to think about using his timeouts, and he does take one here. Biggest play of the game coming up. You have to stop them on this and make them make a decision on fourth. Uh, if they kick a field goal, it's probably over. I, they're only, a, you know what, th there's no way in the world they're good, they would attempt a field goal on fourth down because... If it got blocked, there's so it's it's the the probability of having it blocked in return is is so much there. They would uh, they, they're going to run for the ball uh, for the first down here on third, and if they don't get it, I'm positive they would run on fourth down also. Even if Jackson got the ball back, it'd be at the six or eight yard line, and they'd have to go 85 yards. Uh, you, you just really can't risk a field goal in this situation. If you were down by a couple, you would kick it, but not ahead by six. Jimmy's towing. Seymour Ford, Candy's Busy Bee Cafe, Elro Steel, County National Bank, American Title Company. Fourth down and seven. Kazmarek hands it off up the middle, and the Vikings have them at the 10. Good job by Jackson. Vikes take a timeout. Fourth down. Decision time for Mike Crum. Got a good kicker. 
Ball is at the 11 yard line. Be fourth and seven. Scott Farley used his timeout. I believe he might have one left. And Okemos decision time for them. Kick a field goal. Be a, about a 28 yarder, 29 yarder. Jackson does have one timeout left. Pretty surprised at that call. They, both the last two plays, they just simply ran it right up the center's rear end. Here's the field goal kicker out. 29 yard field goal. For Magaldi, John Luca Magaldi. Snap, good. Kick up, good. That will likely send Okemos on to the next round. 29 yard field goal and that two point conversion down here looms absolutely enormous. That one right on the goal line where, you, well, you'd like to see a replay to see if he was actually in the end zone. Jackson got a hit right at the goal line. They gave him the two. And right now that looks like it's gonna be enough. Kick. Well, that was perfect. The snap, the hold, and the kick. And you could tell McGaldy's a very excellent kicker, but the line blocked well. It's a, that's a heck of a risk because if that thing's blocked, you're putting Jackson in the driver's seat. But you made it, and you pretty much are going to ice this game. 2:48 to go in the ball game. Olkemus now with a 31-22 lead over Jackson High. 2:48, and Jackson has just one timeout uh, remaining. So even if they could get some kind of quick touchdown. Be hard pressed here. The defense did did a good job. They held him out of the end zone, but uh, money kick by John Luca Magaldi, 29 yards. Looks like it will at this point send Okemos on to round two of the playoffs and end the dream season for Jay High. And Magaldi, uh, really this game turned around on the second half kickoff. They punch a short one. Picked off by the Vikings. Wow, late hit. Boy, that was right in front of the official. That should have been called 15. You know kind what? of a, a late spear there. You know what? You think about it. The game might have turned around on the opening kickoff. Olkemus kicks off, onside kick. Jackson can't recover it. Olkemus takes the ball, scores pretty quick, go inside of about just inside of seven minutes to go. They will, you know, they march right down the field. Jackson really never, I mean, they led a little bit and made that nice comeback, but this, all year long we've been talking about how well these kids have been playing, and it just hasn't looked like it tonight. Throw one out here, caught, and down to the 42-yard line. Hard rake. That'll be a first down. Well, Zion Hardrick and Mickey O'Dowd are a couple of good receivers that really haven't, uh, I think Mick caught one pass tonight, and that, that might only be Jackson's second. They had that one uh, uh, screen pass to Kretzinger. Kretzinger might have caught another one. So there are a couple of weapons here, but you know, now you have to be able to throw. Yeah, you, they try to run a little flea flicker, but into the short side of the field, and there's no room there. Yeah, you really want to run it in front of your bench, not the other one, and um, there wasn't a whole lot of room there. Not very well executed on that play. 
So it cost him a down. Whatever that play was last week to Kratzinger. Run that one. Run that one. That pass where he caught about a 20 yard pass and uh, Lake Fenton's not here today. This is no. That's for sure. Noah Bush. Fakes to Kretzinger, throws it long, and that is intercepted. And that will be a great defense by uh, Okemos back there. They had two defenders. Boy, I want to say it was Grant Holzer, number seven, that came up with it. Zion Hardrick is the was one of the intended Jackson receivers. There were two Jackson kids deep. Dakota Robertson was the other. Two Okemos kids were back, and let's face it, Noah Bush is an excellent quarterback, as good as we've seen for the Vikes in maybe for in ages, let's say, but throwing the ball deep downfield isn't one of the attributes. And, you know, I mean, how many high school quarterbacks can? So, wow, 2-10 to go, Okemos leads 31-22. And they're just going to run the clock out here. Jackson has one timeout. They don't use it here. They get three yards on first down out to the 10. Oh, I, Okemos knew Jackson was going to throw it long, and they had two defenders back there. There were two receivers, two defenders in the same area, and Holzer went up and took it away from the two Vikings. From the 10, same play, right up the chute, about a yard. Bikes take a timeout. What you would like them to do is kick here and maybe try to block the kick or you get a return. 129 left. Or fumble the snap or uh, frustrating. Great season, looks like it's uh, coming to an end here for the Vikings. We'll get you all the scores after the game, Tom. Couple of them. Got a couple of them. Uh, Lumen Christie has a 52-14 lead over Napoleon late in the third quarter. Michigan Center is going bananas. Michigan Center leads Grass Lake 35-6, and that's with three minutes or so to go in that game. Uh, Columbia Central has a 54-20 lead over Quincy. And at last check, Matawan and Western were still tied at 14. Third down about six here. Ball's at the Okemos 11. Kesmerick's done a real nice job for them. Hands it off. They get out to about the 15. That's going to bring up a fourth and about a yard. Fourth down and a yard. They might just go for this here. Clock runs with a minute. They can let that run down. Yeah, they won't. I, I don't think they'll kick here. They will, however, take a timeout. Okemos takes a time with 47 seconds. And they're in full command by nine points. Let's take a 30 break, and we're right back to uh, looks like end this great season for Jackson on WKHM. 
Want to join the Jackson YMCA? Now's the time. Take advantage of the Join Fee Special running September 4th through November 10th. All Join Fees will be $10. That's a savings of up to $90. What comes with your Jackson YMCA membership? You get access to both Y locations. Free child care while you work out downtown. Free featured group exercise classes. Access to participating Ys nationwide. With a Y membership, there is no annual contract. So give the Y a try. Call 782-0537 or stop by either branch to sign up today. Back to high school football on WKHM. Jackson's News Talk, 970 AM, 101.5 FM. Our presenting sponsor, Trips Auto Shop and Collision Center. Okamas will not kick on fourth down and a yard. Quarterback keep. Looks like they, well... They'll stop the clock and looks like they have a first down, but who knows? It's going to be spotted at the 16. They only needed to get to the 16. You know, that is a first down. He, he got to give Okamas all the credit in the world. They were big underdogs coming in here. No doubt. Jackson flying high. Just had piled up the points all season, and they ran into just a great front here tonight, both on offense and defense. Oklahoma's uh, dominated the line of scrimmage. And they're just letting the clock run down. And the great year, Tom, for Jay High is history. Well, I tried, historical year. I, I tried to tell everybody that was uh, that was asking, just enjoy this for what it was worth. We've never seen this before. We may never see it again. And they were able to think of all the things that they did as uh, the clock finally has expired and Olkimus wins tonight 31-22 over Jackson. Vikes' first loss of the season, but they did all sorts of things. They won the league for the first time since 1942. They were able to go uh, undefeated for the first time in school history, and those records date back to 1894. Very disappointing way to end the season tonight. Everybody was asking me about the playoffs. Are they legit? How far can they go? Well, I got to tell you, the best team on the field tonight was Okemos. Oh, yeah. It was, they beat the tar out of Jackson, and Jackson had a chance because they made it close. Uh, the Vikes did have a, a 22-20 lead very near the end of the third quarter, and uh, Okemos was able to score uh, right at the end of the third and took that 28-22 lead going into the third or into the fourth quarter and then the field goal right at the end iced at 31-22. Let's take a two-minute break. We'll come back, wrap it up, check the uh, out-of-town scoreboard. Again, our final tonight, Okemos 31, Jackson 22 on WKHM. Hi, my name is Bob Richardson. I'm the owner of the Yes Siri Bob Subways here in Jackson and Hillsdale County. We have a box lunch that we put together for teams or groups. We do a six-inch sandwich, a chip, a cookie, and a bottle of water for $5.75. This is just a program that we've tried to put together to help accommodate those teams, those groups of kids that are together. And if there's any interest in any of that, you can call Matt in my office, and the number there is 748-9240. Aspen One Hour Heating and Air Conditioning is a proud supporter of local high school sports in the Jackson area and would like to wish the Jackson High Vikings the best of luck as they continue on their historic run against Okemos in the first round of the playoffs tonight. With winter just around the corner, remember to have your home heating system inspected by the professionals at Aspen One Hour Heating and Air Conditioning or upgrade your system to a new Amana high-efficiency furnace. Visit AspenHeating.com to schedule your appointment today and remember, they're always on time or you don't pay a dime. Go Vikings! Downtown Jackson is looking good. Come down and see the redesigned streets, improved walkability, redesigned parks, and buildings filled with shops, food, and nightlife. If you haven't been downtown lately, come on down. Hungry? They've got you covered with dining options to suit everyone. There's always something going on, so come down and see all the progress being made in downtown Jackson. 
This message brought to you by American Title Company of Jackson. Omnisource of Jackson, your neighbors at work for your community. At Omnisource, their Sharing and Caring Committee promotes in-house fundraisers with the proceeds going to local charities like the Arts and Cultural Alliance, Habitat for Humanity, Junior Achievement, Area Schools, and so many more. Omnisource is a local company that supports our community. Omnisource would like to thank all of their employees and customers for allowing them to contribute to local Jackson charities. To GOC and Tom Ratchford High School Football on WKHM Jackson's News Talk 970 AM 101.5 FM. Welcome back to Withington. Sad end of the season. Great season for the Vikings is over, but what a year it was as they ran the table. Their first year in the Southeast, uh, white division, and put up uh, over 320 points this year. Played outstanding defense also. They just ran into a team that uh, uh, beat them up on the interior, both sides of the line. Jackson did have uh, a huge injury trying to overcome Xire Edwards the last two weeks. They were able to do it. The last two weeks, not here tonight. And even the very good-looking sophomore, uh, Dorian Riley, was not able to get things going. So they were really short, a running back uh, back there tonight, and never really got that offense into rhythm or clicking at all tonight. They got the big play from Kretzinger just before halftime, the 85-yard pass interception return for a touchdown that, Looked like it would turn it around, and Okemos got that momentum back to start the second half when they kicked off and recovered an onside kick. I don't know as the Vikings uh, ever really recovered from that. They did get a 22-20 lead again uh, briefly. Let's check the uh, out-of-town scores here, brought to you by AAA of Jackson and Wisner. Handling all your insurance and travel needs. Triple A of Jackson. Okay, Greg, the Lumen Christie score, the last uh, one I have was near the end of the third quarter, and Lumen Christie had a 52-14 to lead over Napoleon. It's a final in the other game in Division Six. Michigan Center has beaten Grass Lake 35-6. to So Michigan Center will advance to Lumen Christie and play the Titans next Friday night at James C. Crowley Memorial Field. I believe you'll be there for that, Tom. I'm planning on it. The other district in Division Six, Columbia Central has a 54-20 lead over Quincy late in the game. It's now Columbia 54, Quincy 27, with 4.03 to go in the game. You never know because Columbia Central does have a hard time. They can score, yeah, but they have a hard time uh, stopping people. I so it's think Col- they'll hang on there. It's Columbia 54, Quincy 27, with just 4.03 to go in the game. But the upset occurred in the other side of that bracket as Blissfield has beaten Hillsdale. Blissfield 21, Hillsdale 10. So Blissfield will travel, it looks like, to Columbia Central next Friday night. And that's Columbia's only loss. Remember, they had a big second-half lead at Blissfield and coughed it up, so they'll have a chance for a little revenge on the shores of Lake Columbia next week. Well, and they had some revenge already tonight against Hillsdale, who I think did the same thing to them earlier because Blissfield was able to get revenge off of Hillsdale, kind of the same type of a boat. Right. Uh, So that game in all likelihood would be Blissfield at Columbia next Friday night. The winner of that one will advance to the regional if it's uh, against the winner of the Lumen Christie Michigan Center game. If Lumen Christie wins, it'll be at James C. Crowley Memorial Field in two weeks for the regional. In Division Three, at last check, Matawan and Western were tied at 14. Um, I, I tried to tell everybody that asked 
you know, Madawan's five and four, but trust me. They played a murderous schedule. You, you ain't kidding. And uh, that was 14 all, Western and Madawan at the end of the third. In Division Two, uh, Olkamus now, uh, after beating Jackson High tonight by the score of 31 22, Olkamus advances and they will play uh, Portage Northern, and that will be at Northern next week as Northern, it's a final now, Portage Northern beat Portage Central 35 to 7. Uh, thanks to our good friend, casual Craig Cunningham, former coach here at Jackson High and teacher whose son, uh, he's got a, his son's son, his grandson plays there and a nephew plays at Portage Central. Um, in Division 7, Clinton is hammering Springport. It's Clinton 52, Springport 20 at the end of the third quarter. In the other game in Division 7, Sand Creek and Monroe Catholic were tied. I, I don't have an updated score, but that thing was tied at the half at 28. In Division 8, Pittsburgh made it a little bit closer. At halftime, it was reading 36, Pittsburgh 21. And Ottawa Lake Whiteford was having no trouble over Lenaway Christian. At the half, they were leading 38 nothing. A couple of outstate scores in Division 6 with 2.15 to go in the game. Constantine leads Schoolcraft 24-21. Uh, in Division Two, Dexter has a 21-17 lead over South Lyon. That's pretty late. How about this one in Division Six? Eight minutes and 19 seconds left in the game at Ithaca. Millington has a 43-26 lead over Ithaca. Wow, that's a stunner. Well, maybe it shouldn't be, but uh, well, I'm a yeah. big Millington fan tonight. You're not kidding. Uh, then Montague would be in that bracket also, and Montague had an easy 35 nothing lead over Fenville. Tom Flint Hammity went nine and zero, and they, but they played the uh, maybe the softest schedule in the country. They played all those Burton teams that were just defenseless. So you don't know how good they could be very good. But you don't know how good. A nope. couple of other finals earlier today. Detroit Martin Luther King beat River Rouge 7-6. to six. Goodness. And up north, Iron River, West Iron County beat Rogers City 28-6. to six. And just be even before we can sign off, Columbia Central has scored again on a 52-yard <laughs> touchdown run by Carson Daniels. So now with 3.50 to go in the game, it's Columbia Central 61 and Quincy 27. And then a final score in from our correspondent Jeff Kelly over at Lumen Christi. The final score is Lumen Christi 52, Napoleon 30. And I'm not sure if that 30 was typed right. And it might be 52 to 20. Either way, it's a final. Lumen Christie is won. They'll advance. Home game next Friday night looks like against Columbia Central. Michigan Center. Yeah, who did I say? Columbia? Columbia. Columbia will play Blissfield. Indeed. Next week. Our Subway Subshot player of the game for Jackson High, their fine uh, senior center, Paul Fairchild, had a great year, anchored the Jackson High offensive line and... I can remember one bad snap all season. And that was he did a phenomenal a, job. That was about a half hour ago. Yeah. But it's all over here, but the shout in uh, 31-22, Okemos uh, advances, and Jackson ends a dream season here on Wildwood with a record of 9-1. and one. But uh, they had a JV year of 8-1. and one. They're going to have a good football team. Here again next year when you bring back Noah Bush. A uh, couple other key players coming back, Guillermo Baird on defense. And uh, Riley looks like a real solid runner in the backfield. A few others that will be back next season. That wraps it up. Again, thanks to AAA of Jackson with our out-of-town scores and our presenting sponsor tonight, Trips Auto Shop and Collision Center and all of our fine sponsors. Four-time Ranchford, Tony Mack, Josh Ankrell. Again, our final, Okemos 31, Jackson 22.
Greg O'Connor, thanks for your time. This time till next time. Tonight's coverage of high school football on Jackson's News Talk 970 AM 101.5 FM was brought to you by Jackson Area Subway Restaurants, the Jackson YMCA, Denny's, Lumen Christie Catholic School, Al Rowe Steel, American Title Company, Jackson Public Schools, Ajax Heating and Air Conditioning, Jimmy's Towing, Northwest Community Schools, Omnisource, County National Bank, Minuteman Sewer and Drain, Orthopedic Rehab Specialists, Able Heating and Cooling, Tom Coffee Softwater, Advanced Fluid Technologies, Jackson Speedway, Seymour Ford, Can- Andy's BZB Cafe and Eiselhart Nissan. Visit WKHM.com for a complete game schedule and audio archive.